Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. The late Dr. John Pratt grew up in the LDS Church, but he has joined some other restoration movements. We'll talk about his joining up with Denver Snuffer and his group. Check out our conversation. All right, so uh, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about you then. I know, I believe you used to write for Meridian Magazine. Yes, right? I did. And uh, so you've written several articles there, especially on the First Vision and that sort of a thing. Yeah, I was their science editor for nine years. Okay. Um, and then um, part of the reason you contacted me was because um, in my uh, recent uh, Casey Griffiths interview, we had mentioned uh, just really briefly that some golden plates were found in Brazil and there was a Hoffman forgery, and you're involved in that somehow. Absolutely. So, and, and, I, and I definitely want to go there, but I want to talk about that time where you're a good, upstanding LDS, because it sounds like you've, you've left the LDS and you've, you've joined another movement or two. Abs absolutely. So can you, can you fill us in there? Oh, on, on the leaving part? Uh, I grew up in the LDS church, mm -hmm. and as time went on, I noticed it changed. When we were little kids, we were singing this song about we're marching back to Missouri, you know, and then wait a minute, we know, you know, and then it talks about Zion will be, the 10th article of faith, Zion will be built on this American continent. And when we have talks in conference or church or anywhere on articles of faith, it's never that one. It's always, you know, let's, you know, um, Faith, repentance, baptism, you know. Yeah, we've got the but, but, from... But, but when's the last time you heard a talk in church about we're going back, you know, Zion will be built on this American continent? Probably the 70s. Yeah, probably the 70s. And then, speaking of 70s, I became a 70. And this is back when the, the, you had elders, 70s, and high priests. Every, every stake had a 70s quorum. Right. And I was called to be... Actually, I was one of the seven presidents of 70 in our 70s quorum. So I in get out stake. in the stake, in yeah. the stake. Because See, this, there was no first quorum There were no first quorum of 70. They had assistance to the 12 apostles. Right. There was no top of quorum. So I get out of uh, Doctrine and Covenants, and I'm reading, and let's learn about 70s, because now I am one, you know. Mm -hmm. And it says that there should be seven quorums of 70 for the whole church, and each one has 70 men. So there's seven times 70 men, that, and they are assistants to the apostles. And there's nothing in there about every stake will have a 70. And, and so it didn't match at all. And so This is in DNC 20 you're talking about, right? Um, if it's, no, I don't think that's in 20. I think that's in 107. Okay. And there's, 80, there's section 84 and 107 are the two main ones on priesthood. I think it's 107 that talks about 70s quorum. That was given in 1835, and that's when the apostles were chosen and the 70s. So I'm pretty sure it's section 107. Okay. And, and it was nothing like what the church is doing. So I figured there must have been a revelation or something. To We threw out, see that. And, and I didn't do the research back then. I've done the research now of just how that change happened. And listen, we don't need to go there particularly. But I've, all along, I've noticed that a whole lot of things in the LDS church have changed. You know, I mean, the sacrament prayers are all about wine and uh, bread and wine. I mean, that's still in the Doctrine and Covenants. The prayer there says wine. Mm -hmm. And we're passing around water, which I always said it seems really watered down, you know. Oh. That's, that's my little <laughs> pun. And I remember saying, if I'm ever bishop, I'm at least going to use red grape juice, you know. Mm -hmm. And, I, of course, I was never called to be a bishop. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord heard that and said, okay, do not call this guy to, to be well, a we bishop. We talked about that with Casey Griffiths, that that happened under Joseph F. Smith around the turn of the century, 1900s. Well, see, Dixie made all the wine for, that's right, because the church, the, the section 989 not only says to use wine, and people say, oh, that means grape juice. No, it says, section 89 says, you should not drink wine or strong drink. So that's the stuff you should not drink, except for your sacrament. Right. 
So he's not talking the grape juice you shouldn't drink except for your sacrament. It's wine. It's, so wine is to be used for your sacrament, which should be used there. And then that it's best, I'm reading it here, and that it's best if uh, you make it yourself. And so the church made it themselves. And so down in Dixie, they made wine for the sacrament. And then a lot of things... You're talking about Utah. Utah, I'm sorry, Dixie, Utah. For those that are not from Utah, you might think there's (laughs) another Dixie. I'm sorry. My my grandma's from St. George, you know, and anyway, they made wine in southern Utah. Right. And wine is what was used. And uh, so that got changed. Anyway, just lots of little changes. And the believer would like to say, well, surely there must have been revelations on this. But then surely they should have been approved, like in a general conference, especially changing a, you know, a, um, an ordinance. From this wine to water? Wine yeah. to water. Okay. And even though Section 27 says, you know, in an emergency, if you have to use something else, fine. But the, the Section 89 makes it clear it's supposed to be wine. And the prayers make it clear. Anyway, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, that's a lot. Uh, so I, all my life I've noticed little changes and just sort of hoped that it was always the prophet, you know, that it was all okay. And then uh, um, they started getting so much that I did a lot of research and realized they were farther off track than I had ever thought. And, but still, they were the best I knew. And so I... I was a member up, and it hasn't even been a year since I, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't excommunicated. I was, my membership with was withdrawn. Wow. Uh, excommunicated is such a harsh word. I, so, um, but anyway, so that has happened because I have realized. So this, this, so this is really recent, then. This is recent. Oh. See, I, I thought you were affiliated with Denver Snuffer. Oh well, that too. I, I have yes. Uh, but but I wasn't kicked out for that. Okay. Uh, you see, he doesn't actually start a church. Right. And so they, my people knew I was in his group, but it wasn't, a, you know. But this other one that we're going to talk about at some point with the gold plates and a new church, I was actually baptized and joined that church. And that's when I crossed the line, because if you look at definition of apostate, one number one definition: If he joins another church, by definition, he's an apostate. So, because well, I talked with Denver Snuff for a while back, um, and he said that there's been a little bit of a witch hunt looking for his followers because he said that you could you could be baptized. I'm trying to I'm trying not to misquote him, but you could be baptized because it's not a church. Right. You could get baptized into Denver's movement or something, well, but still be a Mormon. I can explain that. Baptism, and this is, now see, here's, there's a ton of stuff in the LDS church where they've conflated things and confused things. People think you join the LDS church when you're baptized. There's nothing in baptism about joining any church. John the Baptist was baptizing people. They weren't joining a church. They were repenting of their sins and they were turning to God. But they weren't joining a church. And there's no covenant made at the time of baptism. It's the same. The time you join the church has a lot more to do with when you're confirmed. When you're confirmed, then they say, we confirm you to be a member of the church. Uh, And so we kind of tend to do those on the same day. And they're kind of mixed together. But technically, the baptism is not joining a church. And so Denver's doing baptisms, but he has not started a he's formal doing, institution. So he's not doing confirmations. Is he's not. Right? There's no confirmations. So it's just a baptism. <clears throat> is it for remission of sins? It's no. Oh, okay. Now I, I can I can answer that. Okay. And I'm not now. I'm, this is my answer. He hasn't said this. I've learned this for myself. Okay. okay. Let's go back to Jesus. So why did Jesus go to John to be baptized? And, and Nephi says it was to, well, he's, he told, John asked him, why are you coming? And he said, to fulfill all righteousness. Then Nephi in the Book of Mormon explains what that means of, you know, he's an example and stuff. And we've been happy with that because it is required. Baptism is required to enter into the kingdom of God. 
And he is setting an example. That's nice. But I learned one more thing on my own, and that is Jesus was acknowledging publicly the authority that John the Baptist had. John the Baptist held the keys of the kingdom until Jesus did. And he had read, remember in section, see, it talks about when uh, the angel came to John when he's eight days old, and it says, and he was blessed to something like wrench the keys of the kingdom away from the Jews. He got the keys of the kingdom. Jesus is acknowledging him. And if you think about it, anybody that's baptized in any church tacitly is acknowledging that the guy must have some authority to do this or I wouldn't be coming to him. Even if they think no authority is required, there's some reason they're coming. I'm just saying uh, uh, people who are baptized into Denver's group are acknowledging him as a legitimate head of a dispensation. And I believe that's what he is. He has his own little dispensation going. So what's the advantage of not recognizing... Uh, well, okay. What, of what, your LDS baptism. The advantage... Why, why would you get baptized in the Denver's group when you're already baptized LDS? Be, that would, because of what I just said. I'm acknowledging him as a dispensation head. As a prophet, essentially. Is that yeah, right? as a prophet. Okay. Absolutely. I know Denver doesn't like that word. He but. hates that word. It's too bad. I'll tell you why he hates it. It's because everybody follows the prophet. And if they think prophet, they think, oh, i got to follow this guy. And his, one of his big things he says is, don't follow me. Follow the Lord. And, and the idea of a church is a church is supposed to help bring people to God. The whole idea of the Book of Mormon is read the Book of Mormon and it will draw you to God. A church is to bring people to God. Denver is doing something for people that say, you know, I actually don't want a formal church. Is there a way I can skip that and just, you know, covenant with God? And he says, yeah, that's what I'm offering. So his group offers a covenant directly with God, skipping the church thing, which is tough. <laughs> because now you need to have a people who can learn to be a Zion people and love each other without the church. Without the church. And, 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 he's, and he, you get all of these people that are sort of disgruntled either with the LDS church or unhappy for one reason or another, maybe even bitter because they felt, you know, they haven't been told the truth all the time. And now he, you're trying to make them all love each other. And, uh, I, you know, I would choose herding cats over. I mean, that's tough. I think they're, they're coming together. I think he's making, he's not going for some big number. He's looking for a, a small number that can actually all love each other. 144,000? That's way <laughs> in your dreams. I've thought about that. You mean the, the Lord can actually find 144,000 high priests that are, wow, that's awesome. Just in only 7,000 years? That's amazing. Where did he... Anyway, anyway it's hard. We're know. getting off on things. So, I'm not okay. an expert on so, that. Denver's not for... So you were, you were born so I, LDS I, Church. I was born LDS Church. I saw problems. I read Denver Snuffer. He explained a lot of stuff okay. that no one had explained. And it was not that, oh, we had to believe his revelations. It was like right in the scriptures in front of us. You know... The very short one is section 124, verse 28 says that if the Mormons don't finish the Nauvoo Temple, they will be rejected on time. And it says, the Lord said, I'm not going to tell you what the time is, but if you don't finish it on time, you're going to be rejected as a people and you're going to be doing stuff like crossing the plains and, you know, and suffering. If you finish it on time, you will be a stake which will never leave Nauvoo. You will be permanent. Well, they'd never finished it on time, and they were kicked out and rejected. And that's right in the Doctrine and Covenants. I had never noticed that before, and it's right there. So he showed us a ton of stuff that's been in front of us all the time. And it's, what are you going to do with that? I mean, they, they did not finish that temple, and we were kicked out. We're not Anyway, so he helped show... A lot of other problems I had never noticed. Okay, so 
So Denver's saying that God rejected the LDS Church. Brigham Young. Well, kind of. Those were God's words, not his. Uh, he didn't say he'd reject the church. He said he'd re I don't want to say, well, you go read it. I don't want to even repeat it. Uh, it's fairly harsh. Uh, the point is... Because Denver has said he doesn't really want people to leave the LDS I don't church. either. When I was excommunicating, it's really funny. I said, I said, I want you to know, because I say I'm in this other church that we haven't talked about yet. And I said, if your people are happy in your church, by all means, let them be happy with what they've got. But if you have some that are disgruntled because they think the church is off track, send them to me because I can give them something that's a lot better. Uh, but I don't want to mess anything up. See, I don't even want to say it here. Uh, if somebody's happy with what they have, hooray for them. You know, one of the questions that I wish I could have asked Denver, uh, so you're, you'll have to do in, in his stead. <laughs> he doesn't want anybody's probably, but anyway, go ahead, ask, and I'll do what I so, can. Because I've had some people ask, because it seems like there are actually a few, there's about three different questions. One, um, it seems like Denver was kind of open to female ordination, and but maybe isn't Not anymore. Not a chance. No, never no. was. Never. Never was? He, oh, I can... Well, ask all three so you don't forget. And then there's LGBT. Is he? Okay. And the third? And then the third one. I'm trying to remember what the third one was. Um, I forgot what the third one was. Okay, we, we can, let's do the first two. Uh, I, now, I will just answer what I understand. I am not. <laughs> You're not a spokesman. I am not a spokesman. He's no, he has no other spokesman. But from my understanding. Oh, it was polygamy. Oh, yeah, polygamy. That was the third one. Okay. Uh, the f now I forgot the first one. The f <laughs> Female ordination, LGBT, and okay. polygamy. Those are the big three. He actually, he's been upset. My understanding is that he has, from the beginning, been upset with men in the priesthood, the old boys and electing each other. And <clears throat> when it comes time for him to be doing, doing things and... Uh, so he, men are given the priesthood to do baptisms and sacrament. And it's mostly for sure the Irani priesthood that you need for those. And if it's anything higher, it's got to be come from a higher source. But even for those, he said, is there any way we can have women? He did ask the Lord this, he, uh, is my understanding. So he asked, he's met with Jesus several times. And so he asked the Lord, as I understand it, is there any way we can have women have the priesthood? So it's not all this men stuff. Mm -hmm. And the answer was no. Not at this time. And there was some hint that maybe in the millennium. But at this time, no. And it had to do with Adam and Eve. That's all, I can, that's all he said, I think. But then Denver proposed, he said, okay, if it has to be men... Can we have it so that only women can support the men? When they ask for the sustaining, other men can't sustain, only women. And he said the Savior, he said sort of smiled or something that knew, because the Savior knew you know, what he's going to ask. And the Savior said, yes, we can do that. And he said there's two requirements. Number one, there needs to be at least seven women. And if the man is married, one of them has to be his wife. And, um, and they should all sign a certificate, seven women signing a certificate. So I have a certificate signed by seven women that think I'm a good guy. And so I have done baptisms into his group. Okay. So he was wanting women that. But that's not the same. He didn't want them ordained to the priesthood. Oh, well, maybe he did, but the Lord said no. So maybe he didn't ask that question, but immediately the answer was no. So he's never preached anything like that. <clears throat> okay. LGBT. Uh, LGBT, I don't know anything more except that he believes the scriptures and uh, the scriptures are sort of clear on some things. And So no gay marriage. 
Oh, yeah, no gay marriage. Well, marriage, by definition, I believe he has spoken on this. But by definition, marriage is a man and a woman to, and for the purpose of raising a family. And so he, he's, you know, gay unions, civil unions is fine. Just, I've, I'm, I'm mixing in my own thoughts with, I can't say that he would say this. But my understanding is that's all fine, but don't call it marriage because that ruins the, what the word means. The word so is... So he's fine with two gay people uh, having a civil union? I, I can't answer for him. I'd be surprised if he were not okay. Not that if there's still a sin involved. It's like, adu uh, it's like adultery. Uh, uh, people commit adultery. Um, see, I mean, the scriptures are pretty clear uh, against all, of, you know, uh, against any sexual relations outside of marriage. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of things going on. And so that's why, so I'm not saying he's, he endorses it or anything, but he doesn't have a problem. In other words, people commit adultery, they do all kinds of interesting things. I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. Okay. But the third one on polygamy, polygamy, he's definitely against polygamy as everything in my understanding is also, as that was that Joseph Smith. It seems like I heard there were some polygamists that wanted to join his group, and then at first it was okay, and then it wasn't okay. Well, it, it's, it's okay, but don't add any more wives. If anybody's already married... And they're all set up, and they want to join his group. That was fine. But see, see, see that's so it's something that's not endorsed. Right. But it's not worth breaking up a family over to, okay. to you know, try to get it right. And so, yeah, they were, I mean, I remember, I've, so, yeah, that, that's the idea. So, a little bit accommodating, but not... Yeah, yeah sort of accommodating. It's kind of like the community of Christ, actually. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can come... Everybody is supposed to be able to come into Christ, no matter what their situation is. You know, uh, and then they have to figure out which laws, how much they're going to follow what laws. Mm -hmm. And so... But I, I don't know all of all of those things. But I do know that he's he's no polygamous marriages are endorsed by new ones being done by a Denver Snuffers group in any way. He's, that's not that never was that was a mistake in the Well, and he's changed. He used to say that Joseph practiced polygamy, and now he doesn't even believe. That right. Anymore. Well, he did more research. Yeah. I I'm in that camp too. Of that's a trick. That's a quick. Don't, let's not go there. I'm not an expert in that. I, there's a lot of stuff I know about, and that's what we came here really to talk about. And I don't know, I know what I believe, but I can't prove everything I believe about Joseph Smith. Okay. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. John Pratt. In our next conversation, John will tell us that he joined with another spiritual leader. That this man in Brazil had Angel Morana appear to him. Well, first... Several angels. Angel Raphael came to him first and told him the long-term thing. And then Angel Moroni comes and spends years with him and three witnesses teaching them what they need to know before he's actually given the plates, the Urim and Thummim, and the Sword of Laban. So here's a man, if you open the book, here's a man, and his first question was, by the way, why me? You know, which if you read all through the Bible, every prophet's first question, why me? And uh, anyway, but his, his name is Mauricio Berger, German name, and he's German descent, a lot of Germans in southern Brazil. And <clears throat> he said, why not somebody in the United States? He was LDS, member of the LDS church. And, and the answer was, nobody in the United States is worthy to do it, which is quite a statement. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please subscribe for just $5 a month at patreon.com slash gospel tangents, and you can hear the entire interview before everybody else. 
If you'd like to watch the entire video for just $8 a month, you can either subscribe on YouTube, Patreon, or my website, gospeltangents.com. Just click the yellow subscribe button, and I'll add you to our Gospel Tangents Insiders group so that you can see entire videos. For those interested in a PDF transcript, you can subscribe at either Patreon or on my website. For just $10 a month, I'll send you a PDF as soon as it's complete. If you'd like a copy of the paperback as well as a PDF, just sign up for $20 a month at either Patreon or my website, gospeltangents.com. Of course, you can buy individual transcripts at amazon.com and just do a search for Gospel Tangents interview and you can see all the things that we have there. Don't forget to support Gospel Tangents with an awesome t-shirt like one of these. You can subscribe at Apple Podcasts at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents. Get our latest updates at facebook.com slash gospeltangents. Also, you can get our Twitter updates at gospeltangents. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here we've got more of our great videos. Thanks again.